to do it seven times with our brother Donnie Allen. Right. All praise to the Most High. We want to give the Most High all the credit. We don't take any credit for any of this knowledge that comes out. All credit goes to the Most High for this knowledge, all right? So, as you can see, as I have on my homepage, it says, all praise to Yahweh, which is the name that I call the Most High, that I was taught that the Most High's name is. All praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. All praise to the Most High in the name of Christ. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Let's get, let's get busy, man. I don't want to go long because, really, in case you brothers and sisters don't know, I wasn't supposed to speak tonight. My brother Hashar was supposed to do his presentation, but he asked me to say a few words about evolution because evolution is the new hot topic on, a, on, on basically in the conscious community. Because the conscious community could not prove that the Bible was mythology, they could not prove that Israel didn't exist, they could not prove that Israel was not Egypt, beyond a shadow of a doubt. So them guys had decided to change the topic because they feel like this is a topic that they can win. But I'm here to tell you that my presentation tonight is called The Rise of Conscious Monkey Business <laughs> in the Conscious Community. Because the conscious community is dealing with monkey business, man. Now I have to work conscious in parentheses because if you believe in evolution, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you are not conscious at all. Yeah. And if we know we know that our people are not black. That's the name that they call themselves. That's so right. The black community in parentheses as well. So the rise of conscious monkey business in the conscious community. Again, if you believe in evolution, if you believe that black people come from monkeys or any type of primates, as far as I'm concerned, you are not conscious. That's Next right. slide, please, my All right, so we're going to start off with a scripture. This isn't a New Testament, but this is wisdom that anybody that believes in the Bible should be able to appreciate. This is what the Bible says, right? The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 39, it says that all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one flesh of men. There is another flesh of beasts, another of fish, and another of birds. So I needed one verse out of one book in the Bible to tell me what it took hundreds of scientists over hundreds of years to prove being true. Right. Because we're going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Bible is a true book beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, Brother Malak, I want you to work there, right? What you better work there, okay? So again, I say that scientists had to do experiments over hundreds of years. It took hundreds of scientists to prove something to be true that we needed one verse in the Bible that we already know to be true based on one right. verse in the Bible. Next slide. Right. If it doesn't work, we're going to have to just work on the computer. All right? All right, I want you to pay close attention to the following four statements. Now, the last time I did a presentation here, I put my brother Shaka Amos on the screen, and I proved him to be a liar in everything that he was teaching. This time, it's going to be the converse or the opposite. I'm going to use Shaka Amos and what he says to prove that the premise that we teach is 100% correct. So this is a video, Brother Mala. I want you to play this video. Statement number one. Okay? No. Statement number one. Go. Science in and of itself can become a religion if you're not careful. Stop. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear that? Science in and of itself can become a religion without proof. Everybody heard that, right? Start from the top, play it again. Science in and of itself can become a religion if you're not careful. So that's statement number one. Stop the video. Okay? Science in and of itself, without proof, can become a religion. So if you're dealing with science, but you are not dealing with proof, you are just as religious as everybody that you make mockery of. Does everybody understand that? Right. Second statement. Let's go. What you gotta do is just pause. Science in and of itself can become a religion if you're not careful. Uh huh. Keep going. Right? So, someone comes to the with science. Um, there's some other things that are gonna have to come along <coughs> with that science. 
such as authorship, ownership of, of conceptual frameworks, and things of that nature, because they're not as unimportant as many people would like to make them appear to be. Stop. Now pause the video, right? He says authorship and ownership of concepts is important with science. So when we deal with science, we have to know what is the origin of the science that we're dealing with. Right. We can't just deal with it. We have to know where it comes from before we deal with it. Right. Everybody heard that, right? right? Science without proof is religion. And when dealing with science, we must know authorship right. and ownership. Everybody heard that, right? right. This is a comedic guy saying this, not an Israelite. Right. Play the next statement. Go ahead. As Dr. Francis Wilson said, per her teacher, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Lily Fuller Jr., white supremacy exists in all areas of activity. That includes science. Stop. White supremacy exists in all portions of academia, and that includes science. Right. Everybody heard that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Does Shaker almost represent Israel? Hell no. no. What does he represent? Kevin. What does he represent? The white man. 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 The He's pushing Kevin. He's putting comedic scholarships. Anybody disagree with that? All right, next statement. Keep going. Come on, blast. Ownership of, of conceptual frameworks and things of that nature. Keep on, keep on, it's all right. Unimportant as many people would like to make them appear to be. It's all right. Next statement, statement number three, which we heard. Francis Crescent Wilson said, per her teacher, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Neely Fuller Jr., white supremacy exists in all areas of activity. That includes science. Statement number four. Science comes from the Greek or the Latin, or both the other Latin side or saying, which means to know. Did everybody hear that? The last portion of the statement. The word science comes from the Greek and the Latin, which means to know. So when somebody knows, are they taking an educated guess? Is it a hypothesis or a theory? No. The word science comes from the word to know. That's not from my word. That's from somebody that deals with Kevin. That says the Bible is mythology, right? Next slide. Right? Now I'm going to introduce you, brothers and sisters, to a brother I call religious Reggie. <laughs> now, Brother Reggie, I call him Religious Reggie, right? I'm going to show you why I call him Religious Reggie. Because Reggie talks all this stuff about Israelites. You guys deal with belief. You guys deal with belief. You guys deal with belief. Now, pay attention, right? We just heard Shaka Amo say that science means to... No. To what? To know. To what? To know. To know. Good. To know. In the video. Let's go. Because this is not my presentation. This is Brother Hashar's presentation. And Brother asked me to open up. So I want to get through this. I know. Listen, 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 listen. When I was making this, I was laughing. So I understand. I understand, right? <laughs> but not, allow me to go through this. Y'all can laugh, but allow me to go through this. Let's start again, right? Now listen, listen, we gotta start again. I want everybody to be on the same page with me. Our brother Reggie said the word, I mean, our brother Shaka said, science means to know. Now here we got another committee scholar. Let's see what he says. <laughs> You gotta go. Go ahead. Go back. Right. Go back right here. Good. And you're gonna be stopping throughout this, but stay. Keep your keep the mouse on top. Of you. theory, because what we're looking for is probabilities and possibilities. Stop. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? We're looking for what? <laughs> but Shaka says science means to know. It means to know. But Reggie says that all we're looking for is probabilities and possibilities. Do y'all see the contradiction? Am I the only one that sees the contradiction here? Something is wrong. 
Keep playing. So evolution itself is probabilities and possibilities, not facts, not to know, like what Shaka said. Play the video. The African had already described these things hundreds of thousands of years before about how things come into being, even if it was conceptual. All we want is theoretical. It doesn't have to be true. Wait, 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 no. So means to what? No. Listen, y'all better wake up, man. Science means what? No. no. Reggie said, even if it's not true, all it has to be is theoretical. What? Theoretical. That's all we're looking for is theoretical. But Shaka means said that science means to know. Y'all see the contradiction in the chemical community? They want to throw, they want to throw on August 2nd, they're throwing a conference on creation. And you guys keep it, get your story straight. One minute you're saying theoretical. One minute you're saying probabilities and possibilities, but the next man it also deals with Kevin says, no, 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 it has to be fact. They have to make up their minds. Everybody see that? Make uh, the only person that sees this. When I was making this, I was laughing like these guys are out of their mind. That's why I call him religious Reggie. Play the video. The one is theoretical. It doesn't have to be true. <laughs> now watch this religious Reg contradicts himself. Listen, listen. And I showed you um, the evolution of cell life. And we talk about bacteria, and we talk about amino acids, and we talk about proteins, all those things necessary for DNA, right? You have to have an explanation for it. You just can't open up a song or- Wait, 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 wait! Wait! I think y'all missed that. Let's, 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 I'm gonna keep going back. Shaka said science means what? No, no. no. Shaka said science means what? No. Now Reggie said what? That all you need is probabilities and possibilities. Right. And if you did, the Africans had some story, but it doesn't necessarily have to be true. Did y'all hear that? So which is it? Which is it? These guys are all over the place, but they're mocking us saying that we're spooky. Right. Which is it? Play the video. Do we know what we really should know? So he said that we are, listen, listen guys, he said, listen, 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 hold on, hold on. You might have to go back a little bit, Mala. Reggie said that we're not thinking, we're reacting on belief. But just a second ago, he said that he's dealing with probabilities and possibilities. <laughs> probabilities and possibilities are not facts. Right. They are beliefs. Does everybody understand that? Did right. I lose anybody? Nope. So these guys are all over the place. So let me have Shaka remind Reggie what the, what the deal is. Play the video, bro. The word science comes from the Greek or the or say, which means to know. So I think we had to remind Brother Reggie that the word science means to know. So Reggie says he's dealing with possibilities, probabilities, theoretical, belief, but none of this stuff is dealing with facts. But Shaka said he's dealing with facts, but all these guys are on the same team talking about they pushing Kevin. Right. We the Israelites, we spooky. Something's wrong. Right. Something's wrong. Something is wrong. Go to the next slide, my love. Let's go. Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right? Now, I want to play the statement one more time. Play the statement again. Go ahead, my love. Because I know someone comes to me with science. Um, there's some other things that are going to have to come along with that science, such as authorship, ownership of, of conceptual frameworks, and things of that nature, because they're not as unimportant as many people would like to make them appear to be. Now, I want y'all to pay attention because I'm going to tell y'all something. He is right. He is right. When we are dealing with science, we must know authorship, we must know ownership, ownership of conceptual data. We must know where these scientific concepts come from. This is what we must know. This is what my presentation is about. Go to the next slide. Now I'm going to expose some conscious monkey business, right? Now again, our brother Shaka said we must deal with ownership of conceptual concepts. 
Does everybody understand that? Right. Uh, now, right. I have a video right here of our brother Ankh. Let's start with evolution. Let's get right down to it, yeah. right? Uh, our brother Ankh, go back. Our brother Ankh said the stages of development of a fetus in a mother's womb is proof of evolution. This is what he tells us. That when you see a baby developing in its mother's womb, this is proof that we evolved from other species. Wow. Let's hear the brother speak just in case y'all think that I'm putting words in his mouth. Play the video, Mala. Let's go. Did everybody hear that? Uh -huh. Did anybody in the room miss that? Uh -huh. Am I just pointing? Listen, listen, listen. Because if I'm wrong, it's a room full of people with a lot of people online. Damn. Did Brother Ankh state that the fetus in a woman's womb is proof of evolution? Am I misquoting him? No. I'm not lying, right? I don't think everybody in this room is an Israelite, so it's not, everybody's not on my side. Am I lying? No! He said that the, the fetus in a woman's womb is proof of evolution, right? He said that. Yeah. Our brother Shaka said we need to know where that comes from. We need to know ownership of conceptual frameworks. Where does the concept of a fetus in a woman's womb proving evolution comes from? Is that an African concept? Next slide. Here we go. Oh, man. This guy right here, you guys need to become very familiar with him. Because they say Israelites don't study. Now I don't know what Israelites they talk about because they sure as hell ain't talking about me. And we study every goddamn thing. This guy's name is Ernst Haeckel. All right? He is a German biologist who lived from February 11, 1834 to August 9, 1819. In addition to being a biologist, he was also a physician, a zoologist, and a professor. He coined many popular terms in biology, but the but, but one of the most relevant to this lecture is termed ontology recapitulates phylogeny. Y'all need to learn that because I'm going to be going into that. Now listen, when I was in high school, I used to cut science class all the damn time, all right? Because I couldn't stand all this damn Latin terms that we're reading right here. But for the sake of this lecture, I need everybody to pay attention. I need everybody to be really tuned in to what I'm saying. He coined the term ontology recapitulates phylogeny. And he promoted the eugenics movement. Everybody knows what the eugenics movement is? The eugenics movement basically was the murder and killing of black children. I don't give a damn about nobody else. Right. Of our children. That's right. Okay? That's why a lot of so-called black women, Hispanic women, Native American women going to these abortion clinics and killing their children at a phenomenal rate. That is part of the eugenics movement that was pushed by Margaret Sanger. But Margaret Sanger got it from this guy. His name is Ernst Haeckel. Alright? He promoted the eugenics movement in his book, Wonders of Life. He proposed euthanizing or putting to death abnormal infants. One of the abnormalities that he saw in infants was if you had melanin in your skin. That's if you had melanin in your skin, wow. he proposed that you should be euthanized That's or put right. to death. Right? Wow. Now pay attention, guys. Pay attention. Pay attention. Okay? I.e., for example, if a baby was blind from birth, right, he proposed that that baby should be put to death. Well, we realize in the scriptures that anybody that had spiritual power, the prophets, they could heal a child like That's that. Right. That's and right. He didn't believe in that. Right. He proposed to put those children to death, right? Cancer. Somebody had cancer, he proposed them putting them to death. Now, have y'all ever heard of somebody being cured from cancer? Have y'all ever heard of somebody being cured from cancer? This guy proposed that the people like that should be put to death, right? All right. Um, lepers claiming that keeping them alive obstructed what is called as natural selection. His teachings are the basis from which the Nazi Germany put into practice their barbarism. Blacks, which we know are Israelites in Germany, were subjected to the Nuremberg Laws because they were inferior. The word Nuremberg is the laws that proposed that certain people in Germany were inferior. So if you were inferior, you were eligible to be put to death. So this guy proposed that black people, Israelites, were supposed to be put to death because they were inferior in Germany, okay? That's where ontology recapitulates phylogeny. That's where that comes from. Next slide. Now, let's examine what ontology recapitulates phylogeny is, right? Ontology recapitulates phylogeny is the widely debunked 
Let me say that again. It is the widely debunked biological hypothesis that, develop, that, that developing from embryo to adult, animals go through stage are resembling or representing successive stages of evolution of their remote or common ancestors. So now the so-called conscious community is pushing nowadays that we all come from a common ancestor. That human beings, as well as monkeys, come from a common ancestor. We all have a common ancestor. This is known as ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. In scientific circles, this theory has been debunked for over 50 years. That's right. And you have so-called black people in the conscious community that is still pushing this garbage like it's true. Thinking that Israelites don't read and we don't know that this thing has been debunked years ago. All right? The theory is also used in the origin of language, anthropology, cognitive and mental activities, education, theory, development, psychology, so forth and so on. Next slide. Right. Now, New Science Magazine, October 16th, 1999. Haeckel, the guy we just saw another slide previous to this one, called this the biogenic law. It's another name for ontogeny, recapitulates phylogeny. Another name, easier to pronounce, is called biogenic laws. So Haeckel called this the biogenic law. And the idea became popularly known as recapitulation. In fact, Haeckel's strict law was soon shown to be incorrect. Did y'all hear this? i say that that's the way that a baby develops in his mother's womb. Did y'all hear that? Did I make it up? He says the Israelites don't know science. So okay, we're not going to deal with Israelites because we're just going to deal with science. Haeckel's called this biogenetic law, and the idea became popularly known as recapitulation. In fact, Haeckel's strict law was soon shown to be incorrect. So you have a man that talks about Amin Ra scholarship. <laughs> we deal with Amin Ra scholarship. But your information is incorrect. Right. It was debunked years ago. That's right. For instance, the early human embryo never has functioning gills. Did y'all know that? One of the things that they teach is that when the embryo is in a mother's womb, that it has functioning gills like a fish. This is what they teach. It's called comparative anatomy. I want brothers and sisters in this room to understand comparative anatomy does not prove evolution. Does everybody understand that? Uh -huh. Comparative reproduction, comparative anatomy does not prove evolution. A baby in its mother's womb never has gills. What they have found out is what they called gills during the time of Ernst Haeckel was actually the pre-stages of a fetus developing ears. Wow. It was never wow. gills. Does everybody understand that? Wow. These are facts! Wow. That's right. wow. But see, these guys think Israelites don't study. That's right. I'm sorry to tell them, yes we do. That's right. Right. Now, a human, an embryo never has functioning gills like a fish and never passes through stages that look like an adult reptile or monkey. Is this coming from an Israelite? No, this is coming from where? It's New Science Magazine, October 16, 1999. So you guys say we don't deal with science? I say yes, we do. You are damn right. Next slide. Oh, wow, another magazine. Wow. Wow. Okay. In an article in American Scientist, we read, surely the biogenical law is dead as a doornail. It was finally exercised from biology textbooks in the 50s as a topic of serious theoretical inquiry. It was extinct in the 20s. Y'all see that word theoretical? Huh. What does the word theoretical mean? Can't be proven. What does it mean? It means a theory, it means it can't be proven. I heard it from somewhere on the floor. But our brother Shaka said that if we deal with science, science means what? No. No. Science means what? No. No. Science means what? No. But Reggie said that they're dealing with theory, probability, so forth and so on. Do y'all see that? Huh. These guys want to have a conference on creation? Stop they want to have a conference on evolution? Stop they don't have to argue Stop. against their own scientists. They don't, listen, I don't have to do no work. I don't have to do no work. All I'm going to do is pull the articles. That's it. That's right. Next slide. Now, recapitulation picture was exposed as a forgery. All right? 
Ernst Haeckel produced falsified drawings to make fish and human embryos resemble each other. Does everybody hear that? Uh, that picture that we saw, can you go back one, one slide my life possibly? Y'all see this slide right here? Look at the top screen, right? The very top of the screen. These are all supposed to be embryos of different animals, right? Fish, salamander, I can't see what that is, a tortoise, a chick, a hog, a calf, whatever that says, and a human, right? But the very beginning stages in the em of the embryos all look the same, right? Next slide, right? Now, recapitulation picture exposed as a forgery. Check this out. Ernst Haeckel produced falsified drawings to make fish and human embryos resemble each other. When he was brought before a council of his peers, the only defense he could muster was evolutionists had committed similar offenses. That's big. I hope y'all see that. In other words, when you read writings of people that believe in evolutionists, they do that all the time. That's right. Because they really have no proof. So what they do is they falsify drawings to make the simple amongst the people believe that evolution is real. But those of us that study know it's BS, right? After this um, compromising confession of forgery, I should be, this is what Ernst Hinkle said, after this compromising confession of forgery, I should be obliged to consider myself condemned and annihilated if I had not the consolidation, the consolation of seeing side by side with me in the prisoner's dock hundreds of fellow culprits Amongst them, many of the most trusted observers and the most esteemed biologists. Do y'all see that? Do y'all comprehend what this is saying? There were hundreds of culprits that dealt with science and evolution that falsified images and information just like Ernst Haeckel. And this is some of the same information that is being presented to our people by those who claim to be conscious right. and they think that we don't know science but we're proving that we know science right. so before you have a science conference and a creation conference i think you better start dealing with some of this information man that's and shaka, right. shaka, that's shaka right. Amos, he knew that that's why i told right. y'all he knew what he was talking about when he said what he said he said we have to examine the origins of this information oh. Because when we understand the origins, we're going to find out a lot of these so-called white people that gave us this information, they outright lie. That's and he right. is the only one, he is the only one on that team that has enough sense to realize That's that. Right. Let's read the last line. The great majority, I got to pause for, I got to pause for effect. The great majority of all diagrams in the best biological textbooks and treatises and journals would occur in the same degree the charges of forgery, for all of them are inexact and are more or less doctored, schematized and constructed. Y'all see that? This is Ernst Haeckel's confession. He's like, yo, yo, yo. I saw somebody that get locked up, man, for doing some doing something, and when the police have them under pressure, they be like, well, listen, I was the only one selling drugs, you were selling drugs, you were selling drugs, you were selling drugs, she was selling drugs, you were selling drugs, you were selling drugs. That's what he's doing. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Listen, man, y'all can look this up on the internet. This is easy to find. You're right.